This video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. With classes in photography, illustration, lifestyle, influencership, is that what we call it now? I don't know, being an influencer. <laughs> there are so many ways that you can hone in on skills that you already have or perhaps venture into a whole new world of creativity. Recently, I've been teetering with the idea of what my style is as an influencer, speaking of which. So I was really interested in the class, Find Your Style, Five Exercises to Unlock Your Creative Identity with Andy J. Pizza, amazing name by the way, I'm sure he's stoked. He really looked out in the name roulette. A class in which he really focuses on what it's like to develop, understand your own identifying style. The first thousand people to click the link in the description box will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. And after that, it's only $10 a month. Big thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and let's get down with the debauchery. I don't know how I feel about the contacts. It's giving me very much. I ain't never seen two cute best friends. Always one gotta be ugly. That dude does not blink. That's how I know he an android. Hello, it's Kendall. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up, home skillet biscuit? What's good? I believe this is my first video of December. So like, how are we? This year has been a lot. Are you good? What's new with you? What's new with me? I just found out I actually don't hate sweet potatoes. I just hate orange vegetables. So white sweet potatoes are okay. So the purple on the outside, white on the inside, sweet potatoes I actually like. I started watching wrestling again for better or worse because reasons and then yesterday i watched the first episode of euphoria finally i never got a, i never got around to watching it and i won't be watching more <laughs> That's for another video. We don't have time for that today. Anyway, it's Saturday. Happy Saturday. If you're new around here, Saturday is when I do a little something on my channel called Bad Movies in a Beat. Series on my channel where I talk about bad movies by putting my makeup on. Last week, we entered into the egregiously meh story of Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 1. The story of a 18 year old with the personality of white bleach flower marrying an undead vampire swiftly gets her pregnant with his hypothetical sperm. We never really figured out exactly how that works. Y'all tried. Y'all tried last week. You really did. Y'all tried to give all the stops and none of that made sense. Y'all tried. I, I appreciate the effort. No. And considers naming the baby an amalgam of her husband and her side If you would like to check out that video, it will be linked above or you can check it out in the bad movies in a beat playlist. And today, finally. Today we're keeping the Twilight Train rowing. We're finishing this shit. No point of dragging this crap out. Let's end it. Here's our early holiday present for you. Ho, 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 bitch. Let's go. Go fresh off of the foolishness that was last week into this foolishness of this week and then finally be done. I'm so tired. Now, as a little recap from last week, I told you guys that that was actually the first time I'd ever seen Breaking Dawn because despite being a twy hard as a child, I kind of just gave up by the time that movie came out. So much like that one, this one is also the first time I've ever seen it. So like I said, in the last movie, Edward and Bella got married. She got the vampire D. She has her terrifying CGI baby. Jacob imprints on it, because of course, that is a choice that Stephanie Meyer made. She said, yep, that'll be fine. That's totally not weird at all. Okay, Bella is now a vampire. So now she has to kind of navigate her new life. Now, I must warn you before I go into the full details of the things that have happened in this movie, I gotta warn you that this movie is just like a whirling tornado of logistics. Like I can feel how much they were struggling to put all of this information in, a lot of which didn't need to be there. Or maybe it was so much information in, a, in an effort to extend the runtime to push out two movies from one book. All of that may be a factor. What kind of happens I, as I was writing notes for this is I realized it just kind of sounded like I sat there gossiping with you. So here we go, here's the tea. This is what happened. So, oh girl, wake up, she a vampire. She can see dust. She can see the blooms of the thoughts of It's like super microscopic. She, she can see everything. Pale, she's red eyed, she's beautiful. I will say they did make her look really nice. She just perpetually has a set of lashes on and a smoky. 
We're supposed to think it looks natural, that's fine. She's super powerful because she still has like human blood coursing through her as well as her new vampire venom situation. And she wakes up and she hungry, she thirsty, she must hunt. So they take her out, they have this like super, it probably would have been really cool at the time, but like looking at it now, it looks so weird. It's like this green screen, definitely running on a treadmill kind of scene. But anyway, they're out and about flying through trees, whizzing by, and she is about to pounce on an animal for her first meal. But instead she ends up getting a whiff of stupid motherfucker because she smells this guy who's up on the mountaintop climbing up that bitch in Birkenstocks. Obviously he didn't want to live anyway. And Bella's like, oh, smells succulent. But yeah, Bella gets the scent of dumbass and she's like, hell yeah. So she runs, hilariously climbs up the mountain. That was funny. Before she can just hone in on her baser instincts, she's like, no, I have superhuman self-control. And then she turns away, drinks the blood of like a lion or something. So apparently that's like her skill. Like as a vampire, one of the things she can do is like have super human self-control. After feeding, she goes back home, goes to see her big head demon baby. She's met at the door by Jacob, who seems to just not really care as much about her. He's just like, oh, you alive? That's great, sis. Because all he can think about is Renesme. And that's, again, not supposed to be creepy. Okie dokie. She's like, yeah, I wanna see my demon baby. And he's like, whoa, let's not get carried away here. Like, honestly, we should see how you are with me first before you go anywhere near Renesmee, which seemed like hyper protective all of a sudden. She's like, since when do you care about my big head demon baby? But yeah, she does well with Jacob. So now they allow her to go see little baby Renesmee. Oh, f kill it. I'm sorry. Oh my God, that is fucking <laughs> Don't touch me! What the <laughs> oh, it has a full set of teeth, n***a. That's fucking, no. So the creators of this, by choice, they made the decision. They said, that is how we're gonna go about this. Made it so that most of this movie will involve at least some amount of CGI on the baby's face, even as she grows up. Why? I don't know. Again, there's, there's just a plethora of small white children that you could have gotten to do this. But apparently, as you guys are so swift to inform me about, this was the better of two options because they instead could have gone with the nightmare inducing animatronic doll. Oh no. But upon seeing her little demon spawn face to face for the first time since she's become a vampire, Jacob seems to be alarmingly concerned or protective over the child. And this is the second time that Bella has kind of taken note of it. She's like, what is going on? What is with you and the kid? And that's when she realized Jacob imprinted on the baby. Understandably, Bella has a problem with that. And Jacob's like, it's not what you think it is. It doesn't mean anything pedo. I'm just like, I think, I think what drew me to her, what drew me to you originally was that ye, she was inside of you. And that's why I was so enamored with you, but it wasn't you. It was your unborn embryo. Not helping. I'm sitting there thinking like, what about the Edward part? Baby isn't just an egg, it's half Edward's nut. But she's like, how dare you imprint on my daughter? She's only been out of my puss for like two days and already you have some wolf claim on her. He's like, I'm sorry. The reason why I was so drawn to you is because of Nessie. Nessie wanted me there. He gave her a nickname. I would have beat his ass too. Nessie? You nicknamed my daughter after the Loch Ness Monster? Mike quite possibly be the stupidest line of this movie. I'm not sure. There's so many, but that might be, that's definitely up there. My winter foundation is still too light, but my summer is still too dark. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I guess I could make some, but I'm too lazy. So I'm gonna bronze it, yeah. I'm gonna bronze it the fuck, I'm gonna bronze it, yeah. But anyway, eventually she gets over it enough that she doesn't kill him. Now it's fast forward, cause apparently this is also her birthday. Too much going on, too many momentous events. It's her birthday, so the Cullens have given her and Edward a house in the woods, which is all just code for now, we got a place for them to And that's what they do. They go there and do exactly that. Girl, what's it like to smash so good that it brings out the fireflies? I'd like to know. In all seriousness, I feel like they had that particular shot because they knew that would be amazing for Tumblr. Once I had thought about that, it was like 2012, 
That was for Tumblr. That was not for us. That was for Tumblr. We're vampires. That means we don't get tired. We don't have to stop ever. This is amazing. I don't need to catch my breath. We don't sleep. We could smash until till the world in. But they choose to only do it for one night for some reason. They come back the next day. Charlie had been calling and was asking what's up with, with uh, Bella. I forgot her name. <laughs> yeah, so what we're gonna have to do is lie to Charlie and tell him that Bella died because we can't tell him about vampires because then the Volturi will come and kill him. But we also can't have other people seeing her like walking around cause she's supposed to be dead. So they're like, yeah, we gotta tell him that Bella died. So Jacob goes, he's about to break the, the bad news and then he kind of chickens out and he's like, oh, she's fine. To be fine, she had to change. Kind of just this nebulous, spooky change. What do you mean? And then they have this scene. What the hell are you doing? You don't live in the world you think you do. Jacob, put your clothes on. Now this may seem strange. Stranger things happen every day. Which was a choice. I don't know, I feel like we're really driving home that Jacob might be a creeper. But alas, he shows him his wolf form to let him know that he lives in a world that isn't as simple as he thinks it is. And he couldn't have just said that. He he had to be a he had to be a creeper, but okay. But yes, Jacob shows that he has a wolf form, and that's to alarm him that things aren't as simple as he may think they are. Things are are more complicated. But I didn't tell you about the vampires, so you know something's going on. Don't be alarmed. Charlie comes to check on Bella, and when he sees her, she's quote like my daughter, but not my daughter. And they're like we adopted a child, we adopted our niece, I'm okay. And you don't need to know more than that. I'll have to leave if you can't accept that, if you can't accept knowing nothing about this. And he's just like, okay. And that's the end of it. Growing up with very overprotective parents. This is such a wild concept to me. You just say, you give your parents an ultimatum and they're like, okay. They show off the niece. Renesme and Charlie's like, she has your eyes, but I guess I won't ask anything. Girl, there is no way, no way in hell that my mama, my mama, well, maybe my dad, but my mama, ain't no way she would leave that as like, you just say, I'm not gonna tell you. And he just lets it go and he goes about his merry ass way. Eventually they finally remember that she's supposed to sparkle. Probably the last three to four movies now that I think about it, because did he sparkle in Eclipse? Renesmee is growing at an exponential rate, but then an incredibly short amount of time, she is already resembling like a seven year old. And the fear is that she's growing so quickly that she's gonna die just as quickly. Edward goes off to Brazil because apparently the only place they know about this is Brazil, which seems stupid to me because <laughs> if there's a whole like microchasm of vampires who are particularly knowledgeable about this, this information. Why does nobody else know about it? You don't die, you have nothing else better to do. You might as well pick up a fucking book. I don't know, it just feel like something they should have knew, but whatever. Now the blonde vampire from the last movie that came to their wedding and was mad that they had killed Laurent, she ends up seeing Bella and Renesmee when they're out and about. And after seeing that, she runs and tells the Volturi that they had made a vampire child, which apparently is like a crime in vampire world or whatever. Now, children that were turned into vampires were called immortal children. And they were long since made illegal because becoming a vampire at the age of a small child means that they never were able to develop mentally. It wasn't even just that they were bloodthirsty, it's that they were also children. Egad, terrifying. I joke, I don't hate kids. Kids are cool in very, very small dosages. But this had been something that had long been made illegal in vampire world because they could have a tantrum and cause mass destruction, unbridled, able to empathize and understand anything that's happening. So it's just incredibly dangerous for all vampires because they can be easily found out. So they decide to kill all of them. That is not funny. That's not funny. Now the Volturi think that the Cullens have created an immortal child, which is of course a great crime. So they have decided that they're gonna come and kill the Cullen. And then like the rest of this movie is essentially just them going around the world, trying to convince their other vampire buds to roll up 20 deep 
to sit there and be like a witness to how Renesmee is not an immortal child. She's half human, half vampire. Renesmee has this ability to touch people in the face and then show her memories. So each of these vampires come along and um, are told the story, the tale of how she was born. And I must say this makes no damn sense because they committed such a treason, such a horrible sin against vampire-ness. But somehow the Volturi don't immediately come to deal with this. They give them ample time to go around the fucking world to find many a vampire who can roll up and say, hey, defend us so that we don't have to fight the Volturi. They go to Alaska. They go to Egypt, meet that dude from Until Dawn. He was in other things, but that's what I know him for. The one that's like a hot gecko. He's the Egyptian guy that they bring as well as like his people, they come. Alice and Jasper just kind of disappear. <laughs> Um, they give Bella a note torn out of a book and it's like round up all those people before the snow sticks on the floor because otherwise they running up and they gonna kill us. People from the Amazon roll up, they don't get lines. I noticed that. Some vampires from Russia come, or so they say. To be honest, their accent is giving me a little bit more like Italian, to be honest. I have been waiting a millennium for the Italian scum to be challenged. And the only reason we really know that they're Russian is because they say we're Russian and then one is named Vlad. But yeah, the vampires are rolling up deep. Each vampire having their own particular skill that would be somewhat advantageous to the group. So the head of the Volturi, the dude Arrow that sounds like Willy Wonka, somehow the Cullens put together that he's coming to kill all of them except for Alice because she has a particular skill which would be uh, of benefit to him. So he was going to kill everyone else except Alice and Alice saw that and that's why she left. And they all decide together that they're gonna have to maybe fight the Volturi, that they're willing to do that if necessary. Alongside the werewolves, their mortal enemy, all to protect Edward and his fucking wife and their weird ass animatronic baby. Of course, why wouldn't we? Of course we would do that. You can kiss every part of my ass. You call for me from Egypt and you like, hey, you willing to die with us? I'm like, I don't even know this bitch. No, I'm not. You got some loyal ass friends. I'm not a ride or die type of bitch. I will leave. I will jump out of that car you trying to steal my yeah, Absolutely not. Bella realizes that the letter Alice gave her was torn out of a book that would have a secret message only for Bella because she's the only person that the Volturi can't read her mind. So, so you're telling me that if she hadn't have got that hint, if she wouldn't have understood that, she just wouldn't have known the hint you were gonna give her? You couldn't have just wrote in the paper, hey, Bella only, go look at this thing because like, they can't read your mind. Apparently, Alice has given Bella the contacts to some dark web lawyer named Jay Jenkins who will give her fake IDs for Renesmee and Jacob to leave the country. So before she meets up with him, she drops Renesmee over by her dad's house. That's not dangerous. Again, you're afraid that you gotta keep her safe. So you, so you bring her over your dad's house. Also, Charlie hasn't seen this kid in like a month and he does not say anything about how he saw an infant a month ago and now he's seeing a seven year old at his front door, but okay. They grow so fast, I guess. But yes, Bella goes to meet the lawyer guy. She gets the information to help Jacob and Renesmee run away together for her safety and not at all pedophilic. The Russians, the Russian Italians talk about why they hate the Volturi. It doesn't matter. I'll tell you if you want it. I'll tell you. Apparently they hate them because originally vampiredom was run by the Russians and then the Italians took over. So they're like, yeah, no, it should be back Russian. And I'm like, okay, you're not gonna develop this story either. Why did you drag me into this? And now we finally arrived to the battlefield. It's finally the battlefield. They all came together. They came color coordinated. They said the vibes are Navy and Peacock. But the Volturi also roll up with an outfit, giving us classic vampire Mugler runway 1992. They allow Arrow to meet Renesmee. they found out that Renesmee is actually half human and not one of the immortal children. They end up killing the blonde vampire, I guess because of the inconvenience, I don't know. That almost begins a brawl. Uh, Edward's like, stop, that's what they want us to do. I'm like, 
we came out here to save your big head baby and we don't even know you like that. We ain't talked to you in a hot minute. We in Alaska. And now they just killed my sister and you telling me chill? Okay, so fine. The kid is not an immortal child, but we still don't really know if it's like dangerous or not. Again, how you're like the head of vampires and you don't, I feel like if the Brazilians know, you should. We don't know nothing about this. So we should still probably kill it. Timing, we love it. Alice comes back and she was like, I was gone finding my own witnesses and I'm gonna show you that it's actually okay and it's not dangerous. So here, come read my mind. So she goes up to Arrow, sees what she sees, and then she realizes that Arrow doesn't care. He just wants to pop shit regardless. And because of that, the fight has begun. The wolves, the new vampires, the Cullens, and the Volturi just go off and the thing is this fight starts off with oh, i don't think i can show it i really i'm trying to think of like how i could even edit that i can't show it but it starts off with carlisle running up and they take his head clean off i don't have a lot of regrets in regards to me stopping watching twilight by this time but the only thing i regret is not being in the movie theater when that happened when I tell you I scream laugh, oh, I was deceased. I was no longer, I was not of this world. I had to pause and I walked away, regained my composure and then came back to it. Cause I was like, you got me there. That was funny. That wasn't in the book. Hilarious. This fight scene lasts for like a good 10 to 15 minutes. Wolves falling through the crust of the earth. Everybody getting their head ripped off. Everybody dies. Many a nigga was slain. Quality campish stupid ass scene that ultimately ends with Arrow getting his head taken clean off. But in perhaps the fake out of the century, that actually didn't happen. It was just a vision that Arrow saw for the future if he decided to not turn his path away from destruction. If you choose violence, you get your head chopped off. So now upon seeing that his future is basically death, if he decides to do this, Arrow is still concerned about the dangers that could be associated with this half human, half vampire. Like what does it eat? What does it do? Like I said before, Alice had gone and gotten her own witness who is actually half vampire, half human. It's a guy again from Brazil because only the Brazilians would know this information for some reason. Again, I feel like this would have gotten around. I think, I think people would have talked about it, but okay. He's like, yeah, I'm half human. I can drink blood or I can eat human food. I can survive off of either. I'm 150 years old and I grew to my adulthood at seven years old and then just stopped growing. And now I'm just a grown man. I'm Gucci. Like you should let them live. And then the Volturi are like, cool. But yes, all is right with the world. Though that one vampire did die and no one really brought her up again. Renezme will be around forever. And after she's seven, she can start dating Jacob, I guess. And to carry home that I am not insane for thinking that this Jacob thing is weird. Jacob is like to Edward, I guess I gotta start calling you dad now. Ah, ha ha ha. And they go on and they talk about how cute that'll be. When she's seven, she'll be old enough to date Jacob and all will be right with the world. And then at the last scene, there's like a, a collage of the memories of, of Bella and Edward together that she suddenly has the ability to tell him telepathically. When did she get that power? That's new. And they kiss. That's the end of the movie. And that is ultimately the end of the series. So here we are, we have done all five movies. So I feel as though I should make a little like list from least to most entertaining. I'm not saying good. <laughs> those are different. Those are different words. Those mean different things, but entertaining. The original Twilight garbage actually very difficult to just sit and watch. A little bit better, New Moon. Part one, because it's the most like meh movie of all of them, if we're talking technically speaking, like it's a movie. Four is Eclipse because I hate to say this, it goes after, it, it nudges right at my most toxic parts of my childhood. And there was something quite nostalgic about that. The most entertaining is probably this one. And that's solely because of the animatronic CGI baby campish fight scene. Those two things are the only things that make it literally, it makes it such a conversation piece. They had a baby on set and they still decided, let's put the extra effort 
into my girl i hate it here that's it that's the series and unfortunately because this was so popular it inspired so many other works that in some way as I've said before, are in, in one way or another kind of bacon number-esque related to Twilight. I have talked about the first Fifty Shades of Grey. I need to finish that. I didn't actually watch any of the other movies for that. But maybe that'll be in the near future. Probably not this month. It is the holidays after all. There's so much to work with there. But anyway, that's all. If you like this video, be sure to like this video. Feel free to recommend me crappy Christmas movies. So many to go through. I saw one called Santa Jaws about a Santa shark. And I assume it's a horror so that's an option so yeah comment those recommendations down below follow me on my social media instagram twitter both of which are kenny jd and i shall see you guys next time peace